and welcome to your first science lesson this term. This term's lesson is about evolution and inheritance. So that is what we're going to be looking at this term. First of all, you might have guessed, it's about fossils. Firstly, I just would like to, you to ponder this question. What if fossils didn't exist? What if we had no evidence of past life? What do you think? What might be a plus if we had no evidence of previous life forms? What might be a minus? What might be negative about it? Would dinosaurs have been discovered? What would animals from the past look like? I'll give you a few minutes to have a think. Please pop in the chat any really good ideas. Right, we'll move on to the next slide. So today, the aim of the lesson is to recognise that living things have changed over time and that fossils provide information about living things that inhabited the earth millions of years ago. So, you're going to examine fossil evidence. You should hopefully know that fossils provide information about living things from inha that inhabited the earth millions of years ago and be able to explain how a living thing has evolved over time. We will be looking at this throughout the lessons. So this is just a little bit of a starter. So first of all, I'm going to give you a little while to match up the word to the description. So these are the uh, words we'll be using, the scientific vocabulary for this term. I just, just wanted to make sure that you actually understand each word. So see if you can match it up. Okay, let's see how you got on. Okay then. Hopefully you're able to get the right answer for the right the right meaning for each word. Okay, can you recall the fossilization process from year three? This is where fossils were first introduced unless you did a dinosaur topic back in key stage one. So what I'd like you to do, you should have this sheet in your learning pack. I would like you to cut out the bottom pictures and then cut out the whole dinosaur just around the edge of this dinosaur. And I'd like you to slot them, the pictures at the bottom into the correct order, making the whole dinosaur. The there are lots of um, explanations of how to do this task <clears throat> on the sheet. So please follow this and pause the video while you do this activity. This is just building on learning from last, from when you're in year three. Okay, so after you've finished, please unpause this video ready for your next slide. So we're going to watch a video. Thank <laughs> you. 
here are your answers for the sheet that you've just completed have a check and see if you've got them in the correct order if you haven't you might want to order them in the correct order so put in number one on this one here number two on this one three four five and six for example Darwin and fossils the tree of life Darwin believed that there was a single point of origin for all living things and that we then evolved into the living things that we are today through a process of adaptation. This was an original drawing by Darwin that shows how all things were related. Darwin used fossils as evidence to support his theory of evolution. Based on his observation and his own fossil finds, he realised that many of the varieties and species of living things simply would not have fossilised or would have been destroyed. Because of the issues related to fossilisation, he did not think it would be possible to find all the transitional forms, so for all the common ancestors, between two living things, due to the fact that they would not all have fossilised. So here we've got just a, a definition. So common ancestor is an ancestor that two or more descendants have in common, so the chimpanzee and the gorilla have a common ancestor. They may not be the same today, but they would have originated from this common ancestor. Examining fossil evidence. Since Darwin's time, we have continued to find fossils that have proven his theory, including some of the transitional forms. This is now supplemented by the findings of geneticists who examine the DNA of living things to detect similarities and differences. When examining fossil evidence, it is necessary to look for both the similarities and differences in terms of traits. When looking at fossils alone, however, it is not always possible to detect if the traits began as inher inherited or adapted traits. In order to understand this, we need more information about the environment and other related living things. Inherited traits are those that are passed down through genes from your parents. Adaptive traits are traits that are learnt, may be taught by your parents. So these are very different. So Darwin was correct when he said that he would not find complete fossil records for all living things due to the process of fossilisation. We mentioned this earlier. We know that the majority of fossils are found in sedimentary rocks. The lava that forms igneous rock would be enable, would not enable fossilisation to take place. Fossils in metamorphic rocks that used to be sedimentary rocks are rare, as a magma heats the rock and will distort the fossils embedded within it. Hopefully you remember the information about rocks from your year three learning. Also, there were periods where greater fossilization of living things occurred than at other times. Many varieties and species of living things have no fossil record and therefore scientists have to work with the fossils they do have. The most complete fossil records are of animals with endo or exoskeletons, as the calcium in the bones does not decay as quickly as other matter that makes up living things. So endoskeletons are skeletons inside the body and exoskeletons are those outside the body, thinking about bugs and things like that, that have a hard shell. For this reason, many living things such as soft-bodied animals and most types of plants have very incomplete records and fossils finds, fossil finds are very rare. Not all animals with endo and exoskeletons have complete fossil records. Darwin believed that there was a single point of origin for all living things and that we then evolved into the living things that we are today through a process of adaptation. Look closely at the fossilised fern leaf and flatfish and compare it to the photograph of what we have today. Write how they are different and how they are the same.
just like a whale. This was really interesting when I found this. I hope you like it. Sort animals who have a common ancestor into pairs. So which two animals can, animals can you put together, do you think, that you think might have shared a common ancestor? So back in time, they would have originated from the same animal, but adapted in different ways. Have a quick look. See if you can figure out which two animals should be paired up. So back millions of years ago, they would have shared the same animal as an ancestor. Right, let's see if you were right. The bird and the Tyrannosaurus rex. Hopefully you would have known that because I think that's quite a common fact. Some of the other ones aren't so common, which I didn't realise. Manatee and the elephant. Mm, thinking about their trunks there. How about the dolphin will be with the hippopotamus? I wonder how many of you thought that would be the whale. <laughs> Black bear and the whale. Now, if you were to look back in time, you'll find that they will have a common ancestor. Darwin observes a bear diving into the water and made the observation that it was just like a whale. It has now been proven that bears and whales do indeed have a common ancestor, but he would not have known this at the time. So hippo and dolphins have a common ancestor. I just did a little bit more research for this because I was actually very interested in this. So we've got a dolphin here and they share the ancestor down here. So they would have evolved into a dolphin, but then going the other way in a different adaptation path, you would have gone on to become a hippo. So they both originate from this common species here this common ancestor i mean not species sorry so we've got the dolphin and the hippo both having this common ancestor okay birds and t-rex have a common ancestor so here we've got a bird a t-rex and if you travel back millions of years they share the same ancestor, but again, adapting differently to become a bird or a T-Rex. I did look at all the other animals, but I wasn't able to find as much of a clear um, idea of the of who what the common ancestor was as I had with those. Okay, I hope you found that really interesting, as I did. I was very interested in that. And I look forward to teaching you the next lesson in science. Thank you, guys.